So do you pay much attention, Matthew, to, you know, year-end roundups, decade-end roundups? Absolutely. From, uh, from an egotistical purpose, you're looking for yourself at number one and, <laughs> and after all these years not finding yourself there, it's no surprise. <laughs> if you make it to the top 100, then obviously you feel sort of marginally thrilled. And it's always incredibly surprising to me which records they do choose. How conservative they are, mm -hmm. invariably. Um, I remember seeing Pitchfork... Um, I think it was last year, but they had uh, a Ghostface Killer album um, in it, um, sort of in the top ten, I think, mm -hmm. even. And I was like, oh, maybe this is something that I haven't heard before. But to me, it just sounded like Wu-Tang Clan from mm. ten years ago. And uh, maybe it's a fantastic record and I'm not getting it, but it, it showed no spark or desire to challenge. Mm. And so um, as I get older, I'm wondering whether those lists are there to actually... Uh, reinforce a slightly mm. sort of conservative mm. uh, mainstream consensus about what music's function is in society. Because a lot of the records uh, have the appearance and the, and, the, and the reputation, if you like, of being cool and alternative and marginal and Indian, all those words are now used, which in fact disguises the, the essential conservatism of, of what they are. It's a kind of new middle of the road that's got this disguise of being cool. It seems very strange to me for for example i get asked to because i work with sound i get asked very i have very long philosophical debates with journalists about what the kind of sounds i'm using and mm. why i'm using it and what am i hoping to achieve and why should anyone pay any te attention and what sort of effect is it it's like to have and yet i never see that same basic artistic philosophical conversation occur with a guitar band, mm. you know, no one. The first question isn't why have you picked up a guitar in two thousand and nine or what yeah, have you. Yeah. There's no that's taken as red, you know. It's, it's almost um, literally become um, a product, a, 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 a thing you have as part of the uh, kind of compilation of, of of your lifestyle. Yeah, there's definitely a sense that it, it slots in. I, I mean, if you, I mean, just how you browse iTunes, for example, is in, is incredibly. I mean, it's it's all drawn towards the list. It's mm. all drawn towards the charts. Mm. Um, I I'm doing a project at the moment where I'm DJing underneath an a live art auction on Saturday mm -hmm. and um, basically an auctioneer will be selling Warhols and Damien Hirst pictures of music stuff and then mm. underneath I'll be DJing and I'll be playing a different piece of music for each of the pieces <laughs> and they sell a, a, at a rate of about one a minute so yeah. I'm going to have a new piece of music every minute Right. and it ranges from Dylan through Miles Davis through uh, through classical through yeah. uh, Damon Dash and some bling stuff they're yeah. selling to yeah. Bavarian folk music yeah. so um, I was downloading this week uh, from iTunes and I was thinking wow this is such an amazing resource mm -hmm. now like mm -hmm. for a, a project like this where I downloaded 500 pieces of music in an hour mm -hmm. in all sorts of styles from for, for the last kind of 80 years or, or what have you but then I realized that everything I was downloaded was uh, was essentially coming from a top 10 list yes. basically you type in Charlie Parker yes. and you would get something and it'd be rated according to popularity so the most popular so it's a self-generating uh, thing yeah. and so you can see how these end of the year lists have the same yes. function which is that that the, the the first the record that's voted number one uh, is, is the one that everyone then goes out and buys thus justified and, and, so. and what is your reading of what that function is why why is there a craving for this kind of order and this this compartmentalization um, I think because we are now um, hideously and woefully overexposed to music. Um, I mean, uh, there's certain records um, that I've that I looked for for 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. and there's some records that I've still never found mm -hmm. um, that I would like to own. And now that that's that thought's almost absurd. I mean, mm. certainly to a younger generation. I mean, you can hear records now before they're even out. Yes, you know, which is really odd, and you can hear them in all sorts of corrupted forms as well and people listen to music on YouTube which mm. changes the experience or their phone or, yeah, yeah. Uh, or you'll hear it on a, behind an advert or on a lift or something yeah. like that. The idea of music as a challenge is, yeah. is, is, a, is a threat. And it's something you can be serious about and, and actually has a forward moving kind of momentum, a forward moving narrative if you like. Yeah and it's not there just to um, support the status quo. Personally my music is there to reflect 
what it's like to be alive today. Now, you know? yes. yeah, because there, there seems to be an awful lot of, of that not happening now. The regeneration of sounds from previous and the, and the, and the buying in of fashions from previous decades. That that idea of us looking back at the history of popular music and getting a real clear picture of where we were in history. That that's really beginning to be muddied now. What would be curious would be to look at the top fifty news stories of the decade. You know, nine uh, eleven, mm -hmm. uh, the war in Iraq, the mm -hmm. war in Afghanistan, uh, suicide bombing, uh, global. Uh, global warming, um, carbon trading, etc. You know, we can go on and read. If we if we compare the top 50 stories yeah. uh, and we compare the top 50 albums, yeah. um, I'd be very surprised if there's any crossover at all between mm -hmm. the two things. And certainly... You mean no response in the music to, to these events? Yeah, yes. and, and whether lyrically no. or yeah. structurally or yeah. formally yeah. Um, or even how the music was sold. Mm. If we were a newspaper editor in 50 years time looking mm. back to see what were the, the top 50 records of the decade yes it'd be incredibly hard to infer any uh, to be, to infer any suggestion of real friction or tangible friction yes um in 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 the in the wider world from this music well if, if an accidental record or, or herbert record, matthew herbert record appeared in one of those lists would that alter your perception of them or would it just be a, a, a momentary <laughs> flattering thing? And, and would it actually have an impact on sales or, and your positioning in the, in the musical world? Does it have any impact at all other than um, you feel, oh, we're slightly in the group at the moment, we're in the in-group? It depends where you, if you came in at number 99, it's mm. probably, probably unlikely to have much effect just on being, sales. You're, you're another token. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's almost more insulting to be lower down <laughs> yeah. than off. And, the, the, and the, I think the really depressing thing as well is when you see who's like three or four above you, yeah. some, something like that, and you, yeah. someone who you really don't respect, yeah. or the yeah. music that you find really stands for something that you don't believe in. Or There's so many sort of third-rate guitar bands out there with yeah. so little ambition, mm. and to see them to see them in the sort of top 20, I find that very disappointing when, the, when there's a yeah. band like Mikachu or something that didn't really yeah. get the respect. Yeah. Probably she should have done this. Yeah. Year. Um, but you know, and that's interesting, isn't it? You know, you, you, yeah. the, the, the forming of what becomes a provisional canon. Some like Mikachu, yeah. there is a world again where that could quite easily have, yeah. have hooked as much as your, your, your yeah. little boots, your Larues. You know, it could yeah, have done, yeah, couldn't yeah, it? Yeah. You know, and yet it doesn't. You know. Yeah, I mean, she. I mean, I do think that she should have won the Mercury Prize this year. Actually, I mean, mm. not even not necessarily for that record, mm. but for who she is and mm. for what she's bringing to. Mm. To and she's she's basically. Uh, She's the one person I get emailed most about mm. who I've ever worked with from other musicians who mm. are just totally mm. blown away and inspired by her. And she'll be someone writing music in 80 years, whether, mm. whether we care about her or have moved on or not. You mm. know? The competitive element and, and putting one thing with another you know, that doesn't quite belong, etc., etc. it almost seems like um, very counterintuitive to how musicians themselves think. I think that's actually a really valid point. And I think that uh, just... It's not, a, it's not a huge point, but I do think they can be destructive in that sense because they pit people against mm. each other. Mm. For example, because The Invisible were nominated for the Mercury Prize, we were there and you had people like Soweto Kinch playing for Speech to Bell, who uh, Dave has played with from The Invisible. There's a whole sort of scene of musicians that have played with each, mm. played mm. With each other. I mean, The Invisible played with Acoustic Lady Land and mm. Hot Chip mm. Mm. and I mean, the list goes on and on yes. and on and on of the people that they've collaborated with and played with. But you're sort of set against each other somehow. Yes, yeah. You're putting these tables against each other, and mm. it's you know, and it, and it is very sort of, sort of friction again. Yeah, friction it's interesting because musicians themselves form scenes and deform and reform scenes, and that seems to be very healthy. But of course, now with increasing self consciousness about music, it's like the media tries to create scenes that that yeah. are not natural to the musicians and the way they think and work. And I think what's really difficult as well is that with MySpace and Facebook and all those sort of things is that um, you can now apply really ghastly uh, business models in, in seconds to this. You know, there was, there's this incredible, awful program. Someone sent it to me, it's like, wow, this is really amazing. But basically you could compare, you could put two artists in, so you could put in Little Boots and then mm -hmm. you could put in LaRue mm -hmm. and then you could, it would, it would draw all the statistics from all the websites, the record sales, the Facebook, the MySpace, mm -hmm. and it would compare and draw you a little graph. Mm -hmm. And then you could add another one, compare that to, mm -hmm. uh, compare that to whatever, Bat for Lashes, and you put that mm -hmm. in. And, it, and you've got this instant thing. So, uh, 
and like MySpace, you have the number of hits or the number of friends. Or the, mm, mm. So there's like the mystery is sort of evaporated yeah. somehow. Yeah, and yeah. so it's becoming an incredibly judgmental industry mm. where people are over very, very quickly. Mm. How many artists are getting to, to two records, these you know, sure. two meaningful yeah. records? And the other thing that I thought the other day was just where's the last, where's the newest sort of proper British band, you know, like yeah. a Blur or a Radiohead or an yeah. Oasis? Like, who are they now? You know, yeah. that doesn't seem to. Maybe Arctic Monkeys. Maybe they they yeah. will, they will go on. But that was like fifteen years ago. Yes. Now with, with that stuff, it's like where well, is that, that idea that, of an artist? That's very interesting. The one thing that's hit me about the noughties is that from the beginning to the end, not a great amount has happened within it. I mean, the technology's changed, the way we yeah. consume. So there's a lot has changed around there, but unusually for a decade, there's not been a great movement pop in the popular sense, in this list sense, sonically. I think there has in, like you say, the swamps, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. but not in the in actually hitting pop, popular culture. You know? Yeah, and what I love about it as well is, uh, I was thinking the other day about, um, I was thinking the other day about the blues and jazz, and that, you know, you can play jazz and blues on the piano, and it just, mm. I was like, why didn't Beethoven play jazz or blues mm -hmm. on the piano. You know, it had this exactly the same instrument. Mm -hmm. It took 300 years or to, to get to play the black notes yeah. in a certain way, you know. Yeah. And then you just think about hip hop, what an enormous impact on mm -hmm. the world of music mm -hmm. hip hop has had. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. And that's only been about sort of 30 years mm -hmm. now, 25, mm -hmm. 30 years. And it, Imagine a world without hip hop, you know, or without jazz. Mm. Or mm. what are we missing now? That's mm. really curious yeah. question to me. I think we probably are, aren't we? We've definitely something there's will a, there's happen. A, there's, but a, we'll miss it. there's a there's a space, isn't there? There is. There's like an a enormous Philip space. K. Dick space, and you can almost <laughs> exactly. hear it exactly because you know that history went wrong somewhere. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And you get you get like things like dubstep which mm. come along, which suddenly gives you, and then it's like, oh no, it's not. It's, yeah. you know, it's yeah. pulling back from that's right. It, yeah, you know, or yeah. it's not going to be quite what you think it's going to be, yes, you know, it becomes yes. a little more safe again or yes, something. Yes. But, but it does feel, and I, and I wonder whether these, this sort of modern way of talking and describing mm. music, wonder whether that's mm. actually holding that back somehow mm. because mm. nothing is really given mm. the sort of space or the air, the mm. oxygen no, just that's to, right, to breathe yeah. and develop slowly. And, oh, and whatever the music is, it tends to be described in the same way, using certain emotional adjectives as opposed to sort of flights of fancy about what it is. It seems to be constantly yeah. just putting, whether it's Animal Collective or, or yeah. Cheryl Cole, it's sort of talked about in the same way, yeah, which I yeah, think yeah. is also an interesting, you know. Yeah, it's like the, the player, um, when they talk about Hollywood movies, it's, you know, it's Rambo, it's yeah. Driving yeah. Miss Daisy, That's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what have yeah. you, you know. There feels a bit of that going on. Yeah. So, uh, but I'm really curious as to see what's next. I mean, mm. that's really, you know, that's mm. obviously the void that we would all like to fill, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. But for me, the I think the 21st it's century could finally begin. You yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. I feel it sound, you know, mm. I do feel it sound. I feel that mm. we have the potential to hear sounds that no one's ever heard before, mm. um, whether it be 10,000 people eating an apple or, mm. or you know, or everybody. Or, or cremation. In, yeah, or cremation or everybody in the garden building saying hello at the same time and Mike from above or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you know, yeah. it feels like sound is the place which mm. is really unexplored. Mm. So. Uh, that's my that's my sort of brief to myself, but mm. I suspect it'll be something far more, uh, far more, um, I don't know, immediate or jump up or mm. something mm. with better fashion.